Hi there, it's great to have you with me. Now, if you haven't tuned in before, then I'll just quickly introduce myself. I'm Jo, I'm a personal coach. I talk about all things personal development, mindset, well-being, and more specifically, I talk about how to take charge of your life, how to really wake up and start living on purpose. Now, I usually sit in this chair, but as you can see, <laughs> I've got Kippa here. This is Kippa, she is my colleague, she's the Director of Loveliness um, for Joanna Norton Personal Coaching, and she just looked so lovely, and I couldn't disturb her, so I thought I'd, I'd just sit next to her. I'm sure she can help us out if we need it. Now, today I wanted to come on and talk to you about happiness. It is a topic that has been covered and covered and recovered for probably thousands and thousands of years and it's something that you type happiness into the internet and a million different things will come up. It's something we all feel like we are looking for in our lives and that's what I really wanted to talk about today. So. I don't know about you, but I spent a long part of my life thinking that I wanted to find happiness. I really wanted to find happiness. Thinking maybe it's out there in that next relationship that I am entering into. Or maybe it's here in this job that I've got and I just need to look for it and find it here. Maybe that happiness is going to be on the other side of me making tons of money. Yeah, you know, that's definitely where I'm going to find it. And what I have realised more recently in all of the work that I do with my clients and in all the different training that I do uh, in being a, a coach, supporting people in mindset and well-being and in understanding how their minds work, is that... By looking at happiness as something that we are trying to find, we're actually doing ourselves a massive disservice. So by looking at it as something we're trying to find, we're doing ourselves a disservice. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, by saying I'm finding happiness or I'm looking for happiness, we're taking so much of our own power out of it. We're kind of treating happiness like it is that sock that goes into the washing machine but for some reason doesn't come back out again. Or, you know, something we've dropped on a walk and seem to have lost along the way. Or as something that we're hoping at some point we might just stumble over. And actually, when we think of it like that, we're really being passive in our own lives. We are telling ourselves and the universe that it's not down to us to create this feeling of happiness. Because that's the key for me, is that happiness is not something that we have to wait for or to find. Happiness is something we can create because happiness is a feeling. Now, if you've watched any of my other videos or follow me on Facebook and seen any of my posts, you'll know that I talk about this quite a lot. The difference between the things that make up who we are as people, the things that might remain constant in us, and things that actually are not who we are. I'm not a happy person. I can create a feeling of happiness in my life. So the difference between that core personality trait and something that's actually just a feeling. Happiness is just a feeling. It's not a destination that we're trying to get to because that also implies that it's something that we're looking for or even maybe we're creating it but then we're going to find it and we can hold on to it. The end credits of our rom-com will roll and we'll all live happily ever after. We can press pause on our lives at that point where everything is in line and we've found that happiness. That's just not how this shit works. And we know that. Rationally, we realise that that is not how it works. But for some reason, our subconscious, our unconscious minds start to feel like it is 
a destination, an outcome that we are looking for. And when we find it, then everything else is going to fall away and everything's going to be wonderful forevermore. That's obviously not the case. It's not truth. And actually, as much as it feels like that would be a nice truth, just think it through. Because if our lives were all about doing all of this work, going on this journey just to reach a destination and then be able to press pause forever, then what the hell is this journey all about? If we're just trying to reach this end goal and then forevermore feel the same state, well, that state in itself isn't going to end up being what we want because it's the highs and the lows that make that state feel really, really good to us. And actually, it's that journey along the way that we want to focus on because that journey along the way is our lives. So with that in mind, reminding ourselves that happiness is just a feeling. It's something that we can create. It's not something that we're looking for, something we're searching for, something we'll find or something we have to wait for. We can create it right now. That is a really, really powerful thing. So I've done this before in other videos, but for those of you who haven't seen those or want to recap, and it's always a great thing to recap, I'm just going to remind you right now by doing a simple thing that you can create happiness, a feeling of happiness right now in yourself. Okay, so I want you to try this with me. I want you to think of a moment in your life. It might be from a long time ago, or it might be just from yesterday or from a few weeks ago, where you felt some happiness. You felt happiness. And remember, I'm not asking you to remember a time when you were a happy person. I'm asking you to think of a memory where you felt some happiness. It might have been a split second. It might have been and felt like a whole day, but where you felt it. And I just want you to take a moment to take yourself back to that memory. Take a moment, maybe pause this video and think through that scene. Press play on that scene in your mind. See the things that were happening. Hear the things that were being said. Hear the other noises around you. See if you can conjure up the feeling, the actual touch senses that were happening at that moment and the smells and the sights and everything and start to really embody that memory. Now just that, it won't be as strong as the first time you felt it, but it will conjure up some of those feelings of happiness inside you. That is all we have to do if we want to feel happy. We can think of a past memory, we can play a song that makes us feel that feeling because maybe it's anchored to another memory that we've had and a really great time we've had in the past. We can sometimes just smelling a certain smell can remind us of something and make us feel happiness. We can read something that makes us feel happy. We can watch something on TV that makes us feel happy. We can create it. I also want to be able to share with you just three of for me, my top things that help me to really generate more happiness in my life, and they are the three things that really seem to, in all the studies that I read and that I research, and from talking to clients and talking to friends and talking to family, they seem to be the three top things that help to really create and sustain some longer happiness. It is still just a feeling, but sustain some longer feelings of happiness in your life. So I'm going to talk you through those three right now. So let's get started. Okay, so the first one is something that I have talked about a hell of a lot. And I will continue to talk about it because it really, really does work. It's been one of the most powerful things for me in changing and developing my mindset to a place where I do have more of a lasting feeling of happiness and of joy in my life. And it is getting grateful. Getting grateful. Looking around you, looking at 
your life looking inside yourself and thinking of and saying out loud and even writing down or sharing with other people those things that you are damn grateful for. Those things that actually are quite amazing. Now they might be big things. I'm really grateful for the love I have in my relationship. You know, that is an all-encompassing, amazing thing to be grateful for. But also those tiny things. Look for those tiny things to be grateful for. So I'm grateful for that beautiful fallen leaf that has intricate patterns that you can't quite believe that nature can create. Uh, that when you hold up to the light, creates a beautiful, a beautiful colour and a beautiful um, image in my mind and makes me feel a certain way. I'm grateful for the tiny, tiny things. I'm grateful for my own hands. I'm grateful for what I can do with them and I can write with them and I can hold things with them and I can hug people with them and I can feed myself with them. We always, even in our darkest moments, have things that we can find to be grateful for. And I know that is difficult when we are in our darkest moments, but that really is one of the times that we need to try and push ourselves to remind our minds and our bodies of the fact that we have so many things to be grateful for, even tiny, tiny things. Now, the more that we can focus on being grateful, being thankful for all those things in our lives, the more we therefore are choosing the feeling we want to feel. Now, I'm not sure if you realize this, but when you actually think about it, the human mind and body cannot feel two strong feelings, two strong emotions at the same time, simultaneously. So I can't feel true sadness and despair at the same time as feeling joy and happiness. I can't. One of those feelings is going to win out. I know we all try and say we're multitaskers. I don't try and say that actually, because I, I sure as hell know that I am not a multitasker. Um, actually, as humans, multitasking is not the be all and end all. Multitasking actually means that we're probably doing two or three or four jobs not particularly well rather than doing one job really, really damn well. And we certainly can't multitask with our feelings. So why not choose the feeling you want to feel? And why not choose, if you are going to, why not choose the one feeling that seems to generate so many other positive effects in our lives? All the studies show so many positive benefits from practicing gratitude. So choose that feeling of gratefulness, because that feeling of gratefulness then turns into a feeling of happiness, of joy, of elation, of excitement, of nostalgia in a really good way, of all of these other wonderful feelings. So whatever it is you do to take action on this, whether it's that every morning you write down three things that you're grateful for, or every evening you do that from the day that you've just had, whether you tell your partner or someone you live with or you text a friend every day saying something you're grateful for or whether you just have a blank journal and you literally write out all of those thoughts and feelings of all those wonderful little things in your life that you're grateful for. There are so many different gratitude practices that you can, um, that you can experience and try. Try different ones out and see what works for you but the key thing is keep at it. Keep at it and I promise you, after t a certain amount of time, and when, I'm when I say that, I mean probably only a week or so, you'll start to see the positive benefits in your life. You'll start to see how you start looking for those things to be grateful for and how that trains your mind to look for the positives in life rather than to look for those things that you know, aren't so great. So definitely, first step is to get grateful and practice some gratitude. Okay, the second thing that I want to share with you, the thing that helps me to generate more of a feeling of happiness in my life and prolong and sustain that feeling of happiness is setting intentions. So whatever you want to call them, intentions, goals, hopes, dreams, projects, whatever it is, 
setting those small intentions each day has really helped me and I know has helped lots of other people to be able to remember that we have real autonomy over our own lives, to remember that we are in control of this. We are choosing the, the way forward we go and those choices really are in our hands. And that in itself is massively powerful. It's also proven if we set clear intentions each day or each week that it leaves us much more productive in our lives. We kind of sift through those things that feel like they might be important to us when they're somewhere in the back of our mind on a list somewhere and the things that actually when we have to write down the maybe three things that are most important to us to achieve in a day or to focus on in a day we start to sift through the ones that really do matter to us and that really are going to add value to our lives. So maybe it's as simple as having three post-it notes each morning and writing those three intentions so that you can look at them, have them somewhere really visible to you, maybe write them on your phone, whatever works for you. And you know that if you achieve those three things that you've intended for the day, then that's a really successful day. And then you can celebrate those wins. And that in itself, celebration and celebrating those small wins that we have is another thing that powers us towards that feeling of happiness and to looking at the things we've achieved rather than looking at those things that we haven't achieved. Definitely one that I want you to try. Okay, the third thing is one of my favourites. It is spreading happiness outside of yourself. So stepping outside of yourself and just creating happiness as a feeling for you and creating happiness for other people, which in turn, as we know, then, then kind of shines that happiness back on us and, and we can feel it as well. So it might be as simple as I'm driving down the road and I'm in a long stream of traffic and someone's trying to get out of a junction in their car. And so I stop and I let them out. As I let them out and they look towards me, I give a big smile. As they wave to say thank you, I give a big wave back and I spread a little happiness. They probably then will go on their journey and do the same for someone else and will spread some more happiness in the world. And then that makes me feel good as well. It might be walking down the street and someone's coming towards you the other way and you say hello with a smile and you comment on the fact that, you know, I really love your coat or your shoes or whatever it is that will just show them that there really is good in the world. Just remind them and just being reminded of that will inevitably bring even a tiniest amount of happiness inside them and it will reflect back to you. To me, it definitely does when I do anything like that. So set an intention that maybe once or twice or three times a day you are going to spread a little happiness in the world. Now I know that when you're feeling not your happiest self, then that can be really hard. We can come up with our excuses, oh, but you know, I just don't feel like it. Oh, no one wants to, you know, get any happiness from me because, oh, I couldn't possibly make anyone feel happy because I don't feel happy myself. No, bullshit. You can, you can step out of yourself. That is the time to step out of yourself. So I'm going to be harsh here, but cut the excuses. And if you really want to feel happier, then take control, step out of yourself and see if you can spread a bit of happiness to someone else. I guarantee you, if you do that often enough, it will start coming back to you and you'll start to feel it. So there are the three top tips, the three things that all the studies seem to show that really do help to create more happiness in our lives. And remember, it's not about finding it. It's not about waiting for it. It's not about searching for it. It's about creating it. It's about having autonomy and control over our own lives because we can do this stuff on purpose. Now, I hope that that has helped you in some way to even create a tiny bit of happiness in your life today and gives you some ideas for moving forward. As always, I would love to hear from you if anything that I've suggested you have tried in the past or if you try something based on my advice now and it works for you or if it doesn't seem to be working for you, drop me a comment, drop me a question, shoot an email over to me 
and let's talk about it. I'd love to be able to help in any way I can. And make sure if you haven't already, click subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you get to hear more happiness, positivity, mindset, tools and tricks and thoughts from me. And also head over to my website. The details should be just on the screen. And make sure you go to the bottom of any page. Just type in your name and your email address and you will have lots of other happiness tools and tips pinging their way to your inbox every couple of weeks. I would love to have you as part of my tribe. I've loved having you watching here and hopefully I will see you again very soon. Take care. Have a happy day. See ya.